Hey guys, we have a special art lesson for you today. We're going to be reading you a story and then creating a painting about it. Today we're going to read The Mixed Up Chameleon. And joining us, we have our puppy dog, Sunny. Sunny, come here. Isn't he cute? Play in the sun because he's such a good puppy. Yeah, and he's right? a look, 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 look at the camera. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sit down and listen to the story now, Sunny. Be a good listener. Can you put your listening ears on? Okay, Sunny's got his listening ears on. Okay, the mixed on. up chameleon. On a shiny green leaf sat a small green chameleon. It moved onto a brown tree and turned brownish. Then it rested on a red flower and turned brownish. When the chameleon moved slowly across the yellow sand, it turned yellowish. You could hardly see it. I can see it because my animal name is Chameleon and I love chameleons. When the chameleon was warm and had something to eat, it turned sparkling green. But when it was cold and hungry, it turned gray and dull. When the chameleon was hungry, it sat still and waited. Only its eyes moved up, down, sideways, until it spotted a fly. Then the chameleon's long and sticky tongue shot out and caught the fly. That was its life. It was not very exciting. But until one day, but one day, the chameleon saw a zoo. The chameleon saw a zoo. Oh, it had never seen so many beautiful animals. My turn. The chameleon got how small. I am how small. How I wish I could be big and white like a polar bear. But the chameleon's wish came true. But was it happy? No. no. I wish I could be handsome like a flamingo. I wish I could be smart like a fox. I wish I could swim like a fish. He's getting pretty mixed up, huh? I wish I could run like a deer. I wish I could see things far away like a giraffe. I wish I could hide in a shell like a turtle. I wish I could be strong like an elephant. I wish I could be funny like a seal. I wish I could be like people. Just then a fly flew by. The chameleon was very hungry, but the chameleon was very mixed up. It was a little of this and a little of that, and I couldn't catch the fly. I wish I could be myself. The chameleon's wish came true and it caught the fly. I wish I could be a unicorn. What a great and story. It talks upset. all about how sometimes we wish we could be like other people, right? Maybe we wish we could have their life or look like them or be as smart as them. Or be a unicorn. Or be a unicorn, but I you know be what? I a unicorn, me too. We have to just be we thankful to see the tiny dog for who happy. we are. And we should be ourselves, right? Because everyone is unique and everybody is their own unique self that is smart and beautiful and have so many great talents. If we were all the same, the world would be really boring, right? 
All right, guys, join us next for creating a chameleon painting. To start our painting, we are going to take a pencil and sketch out the chameleon. So chameleons have a sort of, tri sort of triangular head. So you start up here and go here. So a kind of rounded V. And then their head goes like this. And you want to draw a curved back. And curved tail. I'm gonna put mine on a tree. I like that idea. Do you like mine? And then for the arms, they're usually bent. So do another V and then another V. Parallel to that one. Nice job. Okay, their arms have four claws. So there's two on each side, front and back, so that they can grip onto trees. We're gonna do the back leg now, same way. And a rounded line for the belly. And then in the background, we're gonna do another arm and leg. This is grass. And they have those really cute big eyes, right? So we're gonna draw a circle and a little circle in the middle. And you can draw a little smile on them if you want. And a little nostril. And then you can decide what sort of a background you want. Do you want to have your chameleon on a branch? Do you want a rainbow background like in the story? I am going to do a mixture. I'm going to have him on a branch and have a rainbow in the background. Me too. Me too. You guys like that idea? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you might have to change how you drew the hands if you decide to have them holding on to a branch. Now we are ready to paint our chameleon. So we're gonna take a paintbrush and some water and get your sheet wet. We have painting paper that came in a notebook and it's just a thicker paper that handles paint better. Um, so you can get different types of paint, like watercolor paint, paper, or paper that's meant for acrylic paint. This is a, it's a big one. And those are usually at craft and art stores. Or you can do this on canvas. If you don't have any of those types of papers at home, you can use regular paper, just don't cover it in water at first because the paper will start to break apart. You'll just want to use a small amount of water and paint on that type of paper. So you'll have to be really careful. It's not the recommended type of paper, but if that's all you have, go for it. Okay, so we're gonna get our paint wet. I'm gonna start with the background. I'm gonna do some red. And then some orange.
Okay, and I'm going to fill in the branch with some brown. Just trying to be careful of the chameleon's body. So you might want to use a smaller brush to get into those areas. What I like about watercolor paints is you just need to get some water on your brush and you can scrub it a little bit with your brush and it takes up areas that you've made mistakes on. And I'm just adding a little bit of black on the bottom of the stick to give a shadow. <clears throat>
And I'm gonna fill in my chameleon with some green paint and I'll probably use some yellow too. The more water you use, the more pastel-like the colors will be, like my rainbow. And the less water you use, the brighter and darker the colors will be. Now growing up, Eric Carle was one of my favorite artists. I loved his illustrations and his books and he typically worked with sort of a collage. So he'd create paintings and then he would layer them on top of other backgrounds. I also loved Lisa Frank. Do you? She's so much imagination. Oh yes, she does. She has some really cool artwork. I always admired people who created children's books and the art that was put into them and I loved artists that even went into stationery so you could have their artwork on your everyday supplies. Super fun. Eric Carle has a lot of books that we know, like Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? And Polar Bear, Polar Bear, right? Mm -hmm. And The Hungry Caterpillar, and oh man, there's so many I could list that we all know and love. I've been adding some spots and cues of yellow and brown to give shading and some highlights and now I'm just going to finish up the eye which will be a lighter green and there's usually just like a little dot for the eye I'm going to dry off my brush and soak up a little bit of that green to give it like that three-dimensional look because it pops out. And a darker color around it. And then a little dot. And here's how all three of them turned out. This is my six-year-old's, eight-year-old's, and mine. We had so much fun making this. I hope you guys did too. Thank you all, as always for joining us. If you are enjoying our art lessons, please be sure to check out our upcoming subscription box we are launching. 
We are going to be creating boxes with curated art supplies and art and craft projects for kids and for adults. You can like us on Facebook at Arts and Crafts Crate or go onto our Facebook page, The Rustic Orchid, and we have a group called Subscription Box VIP Member Group. And that is for anyone who is interested and you can get a special gift and discount on your boxes just for being our first subscribers. Be sure to check us out on social media. Tag us in your artwork. We love seeing your work. And we will see you tomorrow and you will get to learn how to draw a dinosaur, which is going to be so fun. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.